Hey guys, I'm Dave and it's a BB-8 update video for you. Here he is. Oh my God. I have made some progress this week. Look at this guy. Ta -da. So, last time I uploaded a video, I was up to um, stripping off the paint. Not stripping off the paint, sorry. <laughs> uh, sanding him down and getting him ready for painting. Um, this is actually the second time I painted this guy. Because as you know, I'm going in blind in this project. I've never done this kind of thing before, so I'm kind of learning as I go along. Now, I got the recommended products that are available in the EU uh, on the BB-8 guide, you know, on how to do this thing, on, on spray painting it and all that sort of thing. Uh, but I've never done this kind of spray painting before. <laughs> so the first time round, I just went straight in there, got the primer on, yeah, on there, and then uh, got the white on there, and it was it was a terrible job. It was awful. Um, it was all spotty, and it was grainy, and it just looked terrible. So I got a bit of advice, you know, put a tweet out there on Twitter. Basically, I needed to shake the can for longer and uh, warm up the can as well. So pro tip, warming up the can in hot water makes a massive, massive difference to the consistency of the spray paint. Seriously, it's amazing. Anyway, so... Um, I did all that, and uh, I wasn't happy with the paint job. Uh, not because, not the paint job that time round, but the fact that I could actually still see the print lines actually um, on his head. So uh, I decided to sand it right back to the plastic and start again. Uh, and then the second time round, uh, this time round, when I got to this stage, I decided that I will use filler primer rather than normal primer and filler primer usually used on cars for covering up scratches and things like that and it did a fantastic job so if i just put this up nice and close hopefully it'll focus in for you yes you cannot see any print lines they're completely gone so i'm super happy with the results of the paint job now um, as you can see i have done the piring so this is all mama this is stuck together yet yeah? This took a couple of attempts uh, to get smooth because obviously it's a rounded thing and um, the way it printed, you ended up with circles. So if I just put up this really close, hopefully it'll focus enough for you to actually see that there are still a slight few circles, but it's um, I can live with it. I'm going to put another layer on here, a uh, bit of clear coat. Uh, hopefully that will you know, eradicate some of that. Um, and then obviously when I'm doing some weathering as well, the little marks and scuffs and things will help make it look like a non-brand new BB-8 because I want him to look weathered. Um, so little imperfections like that, I can live with. And what I didn't want is the obvious print lines. I wanted to get rid of them, which are now gone. Uh, so then we were on to the piring. So uh, same with this sanded it as much as I could with an electric sander um, and then I've used the filler primer and I did a little bit of a rougher job on the piring because I want, it, I want it to come out looking like real metal and I think I've achieved it. So um, using the rub and buff that I showed you in one of the other videos, I applied that and we ended up with this. So there you go, if I just slowly turn this around, you can see how it's like Nice and shiny, but with a bit of tarnishing sort of roughness to it. Whereas like, say, this section here is like almost perfectly shiny and nice and smooth. And then the section next to it isn't so like as good as that section. And that's the sort of thing I wanted to go for because metal over time gets tarnished and it gets kind of rough looking. So from this sort of distance, this probably looks like an actual piece of metal. It does to me from a distance. And that's that was the look I wanted to go for. So again, uh, when it comes to weathering this, uh, I won't need to weather this as much. I'm just gonna do the, the lines in between um, and, and maybe a little bit of roughness around the edges. Uh, the aerial isn't done. I've just glued it together and, and sanded it ready for uh, being painted. But that's, that's one of the aerials. And you'll notice there's an aerial uh, here um, but I need a wire. So I was going to use, uh, you know, the wire coat hangers, but the metal on the wire coat hangers is actually too thick for this. 
so I need to find uh, a different one. So I thought about using normal stiff wire of some sort, but uh, I mean, if it, if it was on a spool, it'd have a curve to it. If it was just a rough cut, it might end up a bit bent and stuff. So I want to find the right piece uh, of wire to go in here before I actually commit to what I'm going to do with that. Um, but there we go. So the head, when it comes to printing, is done. There's, there's nothing left for me to do. I, oh, I've got these little bits here. So this is um, uh, one of the LEDs. So this will hold an LED in it. And it's just a little bit of plastic uh, with that. And that goes together like this. And that will go inside this hole here. So from the back, like that. So that piece needs construction. Um, and I needed to get some PLA. <laughs> I printed this, this goes on the inside of here. So it goes on there and then in there, like so. Uh, but that little piece is supposed to be transparent because this obviously has a light in it. And if that was on, fr on the front, the light wouldn't come through. And then it dawned on me that I've actually got a few pieces like that that go on, on the edge. So this has these and they've got like little slots in there for putting LEDs in and the light's supposed to shine through. These are supposed to be transparent because these go here. These are the logic lights. So there's two here and one here. Uh, and that's what these little bits are. Those are like the holders and they go on the inside. So um, I need to reprint these parts, this round part uh, with a transparent PLA. So I ordered some today. Um, I just bought a sample because I only, these are the only parts that need it. Um, rather than holding a, ordering a whole spool, because that would have been ridiculous. But other than those little bits there, there, there's no more 3D printing left to do on the head. I've done the radar eye. I've not brought it up. I've not brought it up to show you. Oh my god, give me a minute, I'm going to go and get it. Okay, radar eye. So, this is just a simple little thing. I went and bought some of these. These are, are craft balls, and they come in two pieces like so. This is a 80 millimeter one. This is specifically the one that you need. And there's actually a file that you can print, uh, which is a guide for the radar eye. And you just stick it on, cut around it, and you end up with this. So this is just with a Dremel, if I can get it out, because <laughs> it is a snug fit. This is not coming out. It's not glued in. Ah, there we go. So there we are. So I've just Dremel cut that and smoothed it off. Uh, and that's for the radar eye, which obviously there's a little rim inside there that this fits into. So you just kind of slot it in like that, pop it on. Eventually I'll super glue that in, but I've got to put a light in there first. Uh, and then obviously that goes in there. Very nice, very cool. Um, so I've done that. Uh, I've also, there's also a, a little blue thing that goes on here. So this is the hollow projector lens, which obviously goes in this hole just there. And that has like a, like a blue half dome, like one of them, but tiny. Uh, and there isn't anything I can buy that I can cut down like I did with these. Um, a lot of people have been making them out of resin. So I've actually um, got in contact with a guy other in Germany and uh, he's making a whole bunch uh, that he's selling so I've bought one from him so it's going to be the only thing pretty much the only thing that I won't be making myself because getting in delving into doing the whole resin thing just to make one little thing is a little bit too much so I've, I've bought that I've crapped out and bought that uh, and, and uh, so I've glued the back in there that's nothing that's just a holder for uh, the LED so it will eventually have a blue LED in there on the back of there so like I say there's not much left to do for the head um, in the way of 3D printing stuff. Uh, just, just a redo of those parts. So that means I need to start thinking about the body, uh, which is a huge, huge undertaking. <laughs> um, and electronics as well. So like I said, uh, the main goal at the moment is to do the head to 100%. So I'm going to get it completely done. That means electronics and everything. That means I'll have something to take to shows and whatnot. But in the meantime, because there's hours and hours and hours and hours worth of 3D printing to go, I'll start the body parts. So, <laughs> here is a failed print from the other day. 
uh, that's supposed to be there and that is not supposed to look like that <laughs> so what happened here was uh, this just came unstuck in the night and uh, it's shifted about and obviously it's printed all messed up um, but you'll get the general idea from this this is uh, part of um, the inner body so you've got the inner body and the outer body the outer body is going to be uh, what I need to spray paint and all that sort of stuff but the inner body is what holds the ball in shape basically and it doesn't need to be painted or anything like that so it's going to be just 3d printed and left rough uh, but here's an idea of what that looks like so there are 24 of these sections like that and that will eventually be like a triangle and they all stick together and it's got a really interesting way of doing it <laughs> you basically get pennies and you can heat up a penny shove it in the gap so there's a gap there there we go so that's a really rough job that i did just quickly to demonstrate to you guys um heat up the penny whack it in there and obviously i've got another I'd, i would have another section and i'll click them together eventually end up with a full ring which are at the right angle you just keep making those rings and then all those rings will stick together with the triangular part which would be here um, if it had printed properly and that creates a ball so <laughs> this is a huge print job it's um, going to take continuous printing hours 16 days so technically I could probably make two a day so that would be one printing at night one printing during the day um, yeah that's a massive print a massive long time and I'm going to need about six rolls of PLA each roll costs about 40 pounds each it's gonna cost a lot of money so with that in mind I've decided not to print this version for a couple of reasons one is um, it's apparently notoriously quite difficult to print this one um, with the just, just the way you have to do it um, and obviously my first print of it was a failure so <laughs> it just goes to show that I'm probably going to have some trouble with printing this version um, so I'm going to go for a completely different version I, I can't remember off the top of my head what this version is called but I'll put it on screen for you now um, the other version that I want to do is a much simpler um, uses less PLA it's called TNM and um, that is going to be the one that I'm printing but uh, BBA club files are ah, being moved around they've got a new wiki now if you remember you'll know what I'm talking about and it's taking them a little bit of time to actually get the files uploaded so I'm, I'm currently waiting um, for the body files to be uploaded so while I'm waiting I can't do any printing unfortunately but what I can do is crack on with this guy which is which is fine um, we're, we're coming up to the Christmas holiday seasons now so you know uh, I can wind down a little bit and um, you know get on with doing all these little parts I've marked all the insides and stuff so I can see what's what because this only goes in one way so I've got a B for big S for small and uh, obviously on the inside of here I've got front so that goes in like so and it just kind of clips in which is neat and then this has all got magnets in it by the way magnets in the top let me show you so that you won't be really able to make them out but there's magnets around the ring and uh, there's a little arrow just there it's actually part of the print file so I've just marked it with a marker so I can see where it is and uh, that's how the magnets line up so I can just pop that on there and that just holds that lid in place for me which is great there we go so I can tip it up and it doesn't drop off so I've got the strongest magnets I could find what do you think guys he's starting to really take shape isn't he obviously when these parts are on he's really gonna look really cool so um what's left then so there are a whole bunch of orange parts to do so this ring that goes all the way around here is orange all these squares so there's one there and uh, a couple around here so they're all orange and um, there's a ring around this eye that needs to be black and obviously um, these parts over here although they look okay 
um, up close you can see all the print lines and stuff so I'm going to be spray painting those black as well just to mask it um, it should turn out okay but there you go there you are so that's like the first things that I ever printed for this this project so all caught up um, a huge shout out to Ultimaker for letting me borrow one of their printers to do this project I'm having loads of fun <laughs> and also to my patreons as well because without you guys I wouldn't be able to afford the little bits and bobs that I need like these and you know um, the paints and all that sort of stuff and obviously Ultimaker did provide me with a few rolls of PLA but it's not going to be enough to do the whole project so any support you guys would like to help me out with then it's greatly appreciated because buying PLA and all these parts are going to make this project happen um, so there's a link in the description to my Patreon, you can check that out, there are different reward levels and all that sort of stuff, if you do feel like helping, then yes, it's greatly appreciated. So that's it for now guys, I've got a few things to be getting on with, um, the next update will hopefully, hopefully before Christmas, if not then it'll be in the new year, because obviously this is a really busy time of year now, um, with my two kids and all that sort of stuff, they'll be off school soon, <laughs> so that really puts a damper on getting things done. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye.